Hello everyone, welcome back. This is Coco here with Devil's Avocado. We're continuing oh, Cupid. <laughs> Catherine turned to the tea and pastries, stuffing the buttered bread in her mouth. <laughs> easy there. I, I said easy there, you're gonna choke. We have pancakes. Burgers, things. She said the last part angrily, as if she blamed her troubles on the food's relish. Rosa giggled in spite of herself. Catherine wiped her mouth in mock anger. What are you laughing at, Winch? <laughs> it's almost comical to watch you eat when you're angry, Kath. You're like a giant monsters that attack defenseless towns in horror books. Sorry. Right in the gut. Pterodactyl shriek. <clears throat> oh yeah. Catherine made sad tiny squeals and picked up another piece of bread. <laughs> I assume that's what they're talking about. <laughs> no, no, please spare us. <laughs> She adjusted her voice and boomed out a roar. The Catherinean monster of the deep doesn't show mercy to anyone. Nom, 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 nom. Oh! She dropped it in her mouth and chewed savagely. <laughs> <laughs> Yum! Annihilation is delicious with tea! The two girls giggled. <laughs> everyone, everyone has the haughty uh, 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 girl laugh. <laughs> Catherine's rare smile turned into a rueful laugh. <laughs> and soon Rosa felt her mood returning somber again. Uh. What happened anyway? I hate the villagers. <clears throat> Aren't you annoyed by it too? Sister has changed ever since she started helping in the Chatwe. Now it's all Gil me this and Gwil me that. As if she wasn't already married. Ugh. She doesn't even care that people are talking behind her back. They're calling her a two timing slut now. I'm tired of running around picking fights with gossipers. What a good sister willing hey. to pick up fight. <laughs> I, I, I'm just like, how is mom spreading these rumors? <laughs> <laughs> she hasn't even visited home for a long time. Father misses her a lot. Aww. He always asks about her. Father had worked so hard all these years just to give us a comfortable life. Now he is sick, and all she cares about is that dastardly Maqua. Rosa shrugged. I am a little a bit annoyed, but I guess I've gotten used to it. Their lives are their own, Kath. She didn't dare divulge more than to Catherine. What? She didn't dare divulge more than to Catherine. That's a weird sentence, but it was partially yeah. true. I like Guillaume. Also, a big part of the bad French is that I will not say any of these French words or names the same way twice. <laughs> He's a nice friend, but I love my sister. If they want to stay together, then why not fix this and have at it? I believe they're already having at it. <laughs> That's what it sounds like. But what irritates me to my damn... Really? <laughs> what irritates me to my damn snatch is this. Uh, I'm sorry. You can cut that out. Please. Oh, okay, I will. <laughs> I, I mean, actually, you can do what you want, but. Just... <laughs> snatch. Who calls it a snatch? That's, a... That's like. 
<laughs> it's a monster. Somebody that was... It's a snatch. It tries to snatch people away. <laughs> and it just drags her along. She's flailing her legs. Still making the same noises as uh, eating monster, uh, Catherine. <laughs> No, oh, save the villages of Phallus. Um, I don't even know. Hey, that's how they did it in Japan. <laughs> that's why oh, they wait, have what? that. That's why they have that fe- festival where they worship penises. Because apparently there oh. was like this demon that was a vagina monster, and it was defeated by a penis. Ah. Uh, I mean, I uh, I read this a long time ago. I'll probably research it and give more correct description yeah. when I make the video, but yeah, it was something along that line. Clearly, that was made up by uh, a man, because I'm pretty <laughs> sure most women, regardless of orientation, would agree that the best way to defeat a giant vagina monster would be with a giant tongue. But... <laughs> but a giant tongue festival... <laughs> Actually, I guess in comparison, it'd be about as weird as a as a <laughs> giant penis festival. Anyway, what irritates me to my damn snatch is the way they are with each other. Catherine recently found the use of expletives endearing in her speech. <laughs> Rosa hoped it was a phase. They're f- fucking miserable. Any halfwit can see that. I. Uh, I, I'm totally doing that from now on. Like, she's still super giddy about every curse she word. She giggles a little afterwards. Yeah. They're <laughs> fucking miserable. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I've told Imiali time and again to smarten up. I really like smart. her expression there. It's, it's, I think it's very, uh, well done. You can d- see how melancholic she is. Yes. Uh, I- I'll agree there. It's, the silliness we're having, that is definitely true. Mm-hmm. She's hurting a lot of people, including herself. But as if she would listen to her 16-year-old brat of a sister. Hmm. So this is about nine years later. Even Gwilly Lemmy is depressed. I can tell. Remember when he used to come and visit us here to have tea? Or when we used to have picnics in the afternoon? We used to run around chasing rodents in the garden. You ran around. We just watched you get dirty, actually. <laughs> that is very true. You... Knitheads. Back then, it used to be fun visiting the Chetwe. Nowadays, we can barely even see him. Just stays in his bro. That that's not fair. <laughs> that's an act. That's a word. That's common in English. I'll I'll keep mis- saying it anyway. Brooding. Is it something adults subject themselves to? Like a torture ritual? Like sending needles into other people's throats and <laughs> such? What, a, what are you... Hmm, I, I don't know what you're talking about. Just, I don't know. It was the first thing that came to mind. I was just thinking about his eyes and... I don't know. Thought of needles. Sweating. Anyway. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I really don't understand why two people who are clearly unhappy keep at it. Sex is good? <laughs> Rosa did understand. Uh, mm, I'm debating whether I should say something right here. Uh, recently, I've personally been questioning if I am aromantic. So... Oh. I kind of can see... Uh, I can definitely see where Catherine is doing this. Like, even if I wasn't, I could see why she's thinking this and wondering about it. But for me, it's also... I've been having a lot of difficulty 
trying to understand exactly what romance even is lately because I don't know what where you make that distinction because obviously it's not a matter of physicality since there are plenty of people who are in a romantic relationship who don't have sex and likewise there are a lot of people who have sex with people they're not in love with so I don't know if it's maybe I just haven't met the right person or that I am Arrow. A lot of the things that I sort of see in romantic relationships aren't things that particularly appeal to me. So I, I question this a lot, especially since I've had my best friend go through a really terrible relationship and she stuck with it for a very long time and it was just such a hard thing to see. and. A lot of times I just wanted to be, you know, you should leave him, but she felt like she genuinely loved him. And maybe she did at the time, but I just don't know how powerful something has to be that you would stick through when you're being hurt so much. Um, so w let's have some real talk time since, you know, mm -hmm. that's, that's, that's what brings in the viewers is real talk. Actually, I have no <laughs> idea what brings in the <laughs> viewers because i don't got that many <laughs> um but let's do it anyway because i like to talk a lot yeah. um part of the reason why i'm doing this because i just love the sound of my voice or something <laughs> i love the sound of my ideas honestly my voice especially in recording is something that is difficult for me to get used to oh, but yeah. my ideas are brilliant <laughs> anyway um so as a as a person who who has uh, myself gone through um, uh, various uh, um, development in 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 such things, and you know, I'm probably probably if I wanted to go accurately, my pen would be a better description of what I am, but. Um, I also feel like, like uh, I think I made a Tumblr post to something to this effect that the, it's very important that the labels, the labels that you choose for yourself, help develop you as a person and empower you. Labels that other people assign to you uh, are only used to oppress you, and they can be the same labels. So. Hmm. Um, uh, not totally related, but to that effect, I consider myself bisexual, even though probably with the definition of pan, but it's not something I just, it's a weird thing where like, I'm not comfortable with describing myself this way. And I used to be uncomfortable with other people describing themselves as such, but I've actually grown past that. Um, I mean, there's a lot of things, um, uh, the, but but gender blah, 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 blah. uh i would say since you're, you're expressing these things uh, also uh, there's also the bit of psychologist in me that wants to be like hmm, analyze hmm, yeah. <laughs> you tell me about these things ah you've told me about these things i will uh, dispense my advice and thoughts on these things um that's my psychologist voice uh <laughs> uh that uh I think if if feel if you're feeling like you're aromantic and you feel like that helps you better understand who you are, I'd say go ahead and take the label. And like nobody's sexuality or romantic or even to a large extent gender um and um are are really static. So if if you feel like you're more like you better understand you as someone who's aromantic, go for it. And, um, you know, because, again, it's the label that define that you chose yourself. And at some point you may go, you know, I'm not really as aromantic as I thought. It's like, oh, like there's this. I'm seeing some part of romance that makes sense to me now, or, or 
maybe you get into a situation where you're like, oh, I, I've started having these romantic feelings. Uh, and I think that to me is enough to say that I'm not a romantic. That's fine. Later on, because you, you defined it, you can say, you know, I thought I was, or even I was aromantic, but now I'm not. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and at that point, again, you define the label, so it, it empowers you to not be aromantic at that point. Um, and I encourage anyone listening, you know, don't care what other people have said <laughs> that you have to be, you, you define you and that's how you grow. That's really good advice. <laughs> that's um, really good advice. I, I guess one of the reasons I was, I am being a little reluctant is because of that whole idea of, well, what if I am wrong? And I mean, just look at how much harassment bisexuals get about that, that they have to make a decision and that they'll eventually settle in on one side. And I have gone through different ideas of what I think I may or may not be. Like, as of late, I think the best way to go about it is just, it's complicated. And I've always <laughs> felt a little guilty because when I was younger, about 11, I identified as bisexual. And then I realized I just don't have any attraction to men in that way, sexual, physical, or romantic. And when I think about that, I kind of felt guilty because I felt I was contributing to that whole idea that bisexuals are confused. And so now I just feel very strongly that I have to know for sure what I am. Well, I, I will say that uh, for myself, I think a large part of why I still consider myself bisexual is that, like, I don't like by visibility by its definition pulls with it pan visibility but pan visibility doesn't necessarily do the opposite mm -hmm. and in some ways i feel like that's important to my identity that it that i am i am that and i am that proudly and publicly or whatever yeah but that's me. That's what I need. That's part of what I need from from such a definition. Um, not everyone needs to do that. Your your sexuality doesn't have to be a, a a political or civil statement. But it's also uh, entirely valid if part of it is. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I can understand. That, that. That's fine. Um, I'm moving my hands a bunch. <laughs> like, like everyone can see that. I do that uh, too. <laughs> <laughs> just, just um, a little side story, very quickly. I recall when I was little, and there was one time I was ordering a pizza, and usually I'm the one who does phone calls since my parents can't speak English very well. And oh. my parents were just watching me as I was ordering this, and the second I hung up, they just started losing it because apparently I was gesturing so much. <laughs> like, I was making gestures as if I was the one making the pizza. <laughs> <laughs> but, yes, That's go fine. on. <laughs> um, so what I'd say, like, not only for you, but anyone else who, who may stumble upon this video that, that may have had similar feelings, it's like, um, I... Uh, again, it ultimately matters what you, what, like, your past definitions and your understanding of how accurate or inaccurate they are, are also a big part of how you define and grow as a person, you know? Yeah. Um, I mean, to me, I define myself in a large way, uh, and I know this is contradictory to a lot of, of people's views, and I don't shove this view on other people, but I I feel like to a large extent, um, I I somewhat chose my bisexuality. I definitely felt it as such when I first came out. I felt like 
you know, like there had been bits and pieces previously in my straight life that implied it, but you know, as like what, but. Uh, it was during a period of time when after I'd been a, a very fundamentalist, very like uh, and directly anti-gay politically person, you mm -hmm. know, um, I am I am ashamed to say uh, I've voted in four presidential elections and I've never voted for a loser. Mm. So that that goes to show you where I used to be and where I am now. Um, so, uh, so after that kind of fell apart for various reasons, which I won't get into, like, I no longer had like this, this religious instinct to say, no, I shouldn't do that. And so it's like, well, I see no reason why to be, you know, heterosexual. There's no logical reason for me to be heterosexual. Why would I limit myself like that? So I was like, okay, then I'm bisexual. And it seems that it either you can say that either I was or I, you know, if that fits into your worldview, I don't care. You're allowed to, to view my whatever. As long as you don't tell me I had to have been this way, you yeah. can view other people's experiences through the lens that you have that helped you. Um, uh, so I, I do consider that for in general, I was straight up until, you know, I was 21 or so when this happened. Um, and gosh, it's still a long time, but it's still <laughs> really old for something like this to happen. Um, uh, so and uh, like, I forget where I was going with this. This is again. I like to hear myself say ideas, um, <laughs> but to the point with you is that, like, you don't owe, owe it to bisexuals to, like, validate any part of your identity as bisexual or not bisexual at any point. Like, you don't have to worry about your identity in helping helping or hurting by visibility you I, and people can be confused about their sexuality like people can be confused and think they're bisexual and then they end up being straight or gay or yeah, yeah. a romantic it, it can happen and I it think it does happen. It's it's, it's just I, one of those frustrating things where like when it does, so many people just jump on it and like are C C, sort of like Mother did. Yeah, yeah. It just the. I think the important point is less that you that you don't have to say that. No, I was never bisexual. I was never confused. I just something or whatever. You don't have to say something. You don't have to like force it into your head in order to to be good to people, to be good towards, you know, this this issue. Um, you need to do what you need to do for your identity. But at the same time, if you want to do right by by bisexuals at large, then say like that was my experience, but that's not necessarily a normal experience. Yeah, lots of things happen. You know, I think, I think, uh, well, uh, between what you've said and you're allowing me to blabber on about <laughs> the subject on your show, um, I think that probably does far more than any potential possible harm that that th the way that you felt did. I mean, in the end, do you feel like, like? like your experience was a, a normal one it's like ah did it validate to you the the stereotype i don't i don't think so no yeah it, it didn't sound like it so i think to that end i think you're fine well, that's define yourself hear. and your past as you wish thank you but uh did we 
did we use up all our, of our time? <laughs> I think we or... did. We're at like 27 minutes now. Well, this has been a very special episode, hasn't it? Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm always happy to take some time to to talk about things like these and anything that the games might inspire. You know, yeah. no good to just rush through it and not really see how the game affected you or what thoughts it had it brought to you. Because that's one of the things I personally like most about watching YouTubers is just getting the chance to hear their opinion and learn more about them and just see what their thoughts on different subjects are. So I hope you guys yeah. enjoyed it too. Yeah. Um, and of course, if you if you have any questions in that regard, I, 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 I literally, you can send me some random question about sexuality uh, on the YouTube channel and I will, I will respond. I, I might not respond in public comments, re depending on what the question is. But I, I will get back to you. I, I will answer any question in this regard. Because I like to hear myself express ideas. <laughs> <laughs> I like to think that I'm right. <laughs> we'll see you guys on next time. Farewell. Right now. <laughs> God, I know they're going to end up they, dancing like, in a shop one yeah. day. <laughs> <laughs> I love that they have sapped that guy of all will to live, but not his sweet jamming moves. <laughs> <laughs> this is awful! It's as though they've lost their will to live, but not his sweet jamming moves! <laughs> no one can take his groove. <laughs> groove. <laughs> uh, she looks pretty nice. Don't you ever <laughs> shut up! <laughs> So much about look for looking nice. Yeah, You're you can't judge a book by its cover. <sighs> I'm over it. This is Pandora's <laughs> castle. She's basically vegan. Castle. She's waiting for someone to fall or saying, "I've got your jacket," but he's been drained of all energy, so he's just going. Mm. <laughs> well, it is pretty strange. Dialogue's all the people in the town squad went up to the witch's castle, but hasn't returned yet. Ah. Those haven't are the guys we saw. <laughs> Most of the town people and soldiers have turned into zombies. This is kind of eating anyone. Yet. Kind of a bit of a thriller. If you get what I'm saying here. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I've I've also been assigned to the witch hunt. But I didn't want to get hurt, so I pretended to be sick. Don't don't tell anyone. <laughs> I'm a giant. Hey coward. everyone! <laughs> <laughs> That guy's pretending to be sick. My life is precious, and this place is dangerous, so I'm moving away! Good call. <laughs> Thanks Sensible for telling that guy. to a complete stranger. <laughs>